As with many Pacific Islanders living around East Palo Alto, the shoreline is a spiritual place to Anthony Tangia and Violet Saina. A lot of things, you know, happen, but this over here, you can walk in nice and hear the water and then hear the bird, and that's everything. They're part of a community that has helped restore this section of Cooley Landing Park, and they say people here are keenly aware of the threat to the shoreline from flooding and sea level rise. Many of them would say, oh, you know, we came to the United States because we want to feel safe, and now they're hearing of the same problems again. Like, where are they going to go next, right? They came here because of climate change and sea level rise. It is a beautiful place. We met the pair as Sayena was leading a tour of the area with lawmakers who are sponsoring climate bond legislation designed to pay for shoreline projects, including the restoration of thousands of acres of tidal marsh that can help absorb the rising sea levels that have already begun flooding this area of East Palo Alto during king tides. You know, wetlands actually act as a sponge. They slow down the flow of water, they absorb high floodwaters, and then release them slowly when the tide goes down or when the storm passes. David Lewis directs the environmental nonprofit Save the Bay. He says the region is barely halfway to its goal of restoring and protecting 100,000 acres of tidal marsh. <coughs> but earlier this year, crews finally breached a levee at a nearby salt pond, creating the bay's newest tidal marsh alongside a green levee planted by the group. We've learned in the last 20 years that we can restore these diked off areas to tidal marsh, and that's really improved the health of the bay. But in the next few weeks, we could learn whether there will be money to keep up the pace. Lawmakers have pressed Governor Newsom to back a climate bond of $10 billion or more in time to make the deadline for the fall ballot. But with the state facing a multi-billion dollar deficit, the financial landscape is growing more unpredictable. Still though, backers say the spending would help protect housing developments and existing communities. Adrian Covert is with the Bay Area Council. I don't think that we can get the most cost-effective flood solution for the Bay Area without incorporating and maximizing our tidal marsh restoration opportunities. And the urgency is easy to see, with areas like Bell Marin Keys near Novato and Foster City already needing to bolster everything from seawalls to improved levees and other flood control structures. Backers believe expanding tidal marsh will help take some of the pressure off in coming decades and protect shoreline areas that have become both a gathering point and a refuge to communities around the bay. Ah, it's a spiritual yes. thing, yes. yes. Even myself, I think us who grew up around the water and the ocean, we are pulled towards the yes. water. And committed to protecting it. In East Palo Alto, Spencer Christian, ABC 7 News.